Today, I'm here to talk about Charles Augustine de Coulomb, who in 1785 published his work that described the force between two charges. And so we still use that in the same form, although our values have changed a little bit because the measurements have changed, but we still name it in his honor. So today, we're here about Coulomb's Law. Coulomb's Law has this form, it's, uh, measuring the force, which is the F, and that is a combination of K, which we'll get to in a second. That's a constant. Q1 and Q2 are the charges involved. R squared is the square of the distance between the two charges, and then this R hat is just indicating the, di the direction between the two. This is a force that acts along a line connecting the centers of the two charges. If those two charges happen to be lying in the x direction, this would be x hat, and it would either be a positive x or a negative hat x, depending on the charges. That's my cat, if you can hear him. So values here. Um, the k has the same value anywhere in the universe. It's 8.99 times 10 to the ninth power, and the units are newtons, newton meter squared per coulomb squared, which essentially just changes all of this into newtons. Um, Q is the charge of each object that we're looking at or each point, and it's measured in coulombs. And for reference, an electron or proton has a charge of 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Part of the reason that this is uh, one coulomb is actually a really, really big number. Part of the reason for that probably was early on, it was a challenge to measure small charges. So um, I'm not sure about the history behind how, well, just how big it is. R is the distance between the charges as usual measured in meters. And once you combine it all with K, you get uh, the force. Now this is really, really similar to uh, the what we found for Newton's law, which I have down here as reference. Oh, it came off the, it went off the page. Newton's law of universal gravitation has almost the exact same form. It's one over R squared, the distance between the two objects. It's a combination of a constant and then the two masses that make up that force. Oop, and I didn't change all of this. We don't need that. That is non-essential information and does not relate to here. So these were the masses in kilograms that we measured, and this would tell us the force between two things due to gravity and their masses. This is analogous. It's just looking at the charges. That's all I have to say about that.